Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my first monthly bullet journal setup of 2020. This month is July, I'm gonna be doing a retro theme. So I know I didn't film my June setup, but I had a theme of Paris, and I started out with doing a lot of architectural drawings, but towards the end of the month, I ended up just drawing little pink doodles that I thought were pretty. Although the month kind of turned out weird, I really liked the theme. But I'm excited to move on to a more retro theme. So for this month, I'm gonna start with my cover page, as usual, and I'm gonna start by outlining the word July in my Tombow Fudenosuke pen. This is actually a calligraphy pen, but I found it's a great way to outline things because it's a little fatter than a usual micron and it brings your lettering to another level. I'm using this Cooper Black font with exaggerated serifs and bottoms, and it was a common font that I saw in 70s pictures. Another common theme that I found were dull but bold colors, and although that sounds like an oxymoron, you'll see in a minute how that works. The colors that I'm using are a bright orange, a muted yellow, a warm brown, and a light teal. And I'm making a 3D effect by making it look like there's a wall attached to the ground on this cover page. This is also a common aesthetic that I found in 70s pictures, and I wanted to put it on my cover page because I thought it was a great way to represent this decade. So here are all the stripes colored in, and I really like the way it looks because it looks like July is resting on the ground. And then of course, the classic way of covering up mistakes with using my gel pen, I'm just using my white to cover up those little parts that went over the lines. A good way to not have to use this is to use washi tape, but of course I am lazy and didn't feel like it, so we just use the gel pen method. Now I'm just thickening up my lines because I felt that they needed to be a little bolder, and as soon as this is done, we're gonna move on to the coat page. So in looking for inspiration for the 70s theme, I saw a lot of little Volkswagen vans, or love bugs as they're called, and I really wanted to incorporate them in my theme, but I couldn't find space in my other pages to draw this doodle. So I just decided to put it in my quote page, and I really liked the way it turned out. I'm starting by outlining the little blue highlights of this fan with my mild liner, and then going around the white parts with my Sacra Pegra Micron. This is a really easy doodle to draw, and I'm really happy I decided to put it in my journal. As soon as I finished outlining this shape, I decided to use marker shading to give this fan a little more depth. To do this, I'm just going over the parts that I've already shaded in and just adding another layer of ink on top to make it look darker. Since this mild liner has a very light opacity, it made it very clear the darker spots, so it gave it a kind of cartoon look, which I really like. And then my quote says, here comes the sun, which I think is a great way to bring the 70s vibe into this bullet journal. Now let's move on to the calendar page. So first I'm gonna start out by outlining my calendar box with my Sacra Pegra Micron. I usually do a full page calendar, but this month I decided to do a half page just because my schedule has been shortened, as I'm sure a lot of yours has too. As soon as things get back to normal, I'm probably gonna start bringing my calendars back to a full page spread, but for now, I'm just gonna do a half page because I don't have that many things going on this month. So when I finish outlining it, I'm going to go in with all the days of the week and spread them in a normal handwriting font. The main font I used for the titles was so big and bold, I thought, that I didn't want to take attention away from that when someone looked at this page. So instead, I'm just going with my usual handwriting font to write the days of the week, and I think it turned out pretty great. Lastly, I'm just adding these little blue circles behind these numbers, and I think it's a great way to add a pop of color to this calendar. So since we have a 70s theme, I obviously add to put hippie drawings like hearts and flowers all over this theme. So you're gonna see me using my brush pens and markers to kind of color in these flowers and hearts. I outlined these doodles with the same pen, that way it wasn't very obvious. And now you see me making the worst mistake of this entire setup and making a drop shadow for this calendar. I think why I didn't like it was because the particular marker that I used, the black super tip, looked almost green, especially on camera, and it clashed with the warm tones of this color scheme. But we're just going to try to ignore it as much as possible, and let's move on. 
So right now I'm just adding little more doodles to the bottom of this page and then I'm going to go in and write July in the Tombow Fudenosuke pen again. Because I felt like this page needed a little something extra, I decided to add a similar stripe design to the bottom corner that was on the cover page. These stripes are super easy, you're just coloring in a little wedge at the bottom of the page, but I think it kind of heightens this spread and brings it to another level. So now that we're done with that, let's move on to the next page. This would usually be my goals page, as you'll likely see in future setups, but last month I didn't like the goals page. In fact, I felt like I wasn't using it. Usually I would have three to four goals with little steps at the bottom to how I would achieve them during that month, but towards the end of June I realized that none of them were really accomplished, and I didn't really feel like I wanted to accomplish them for that matter. So I decided to take a different outlook on this month, and instead I do a journal entry. I have three different sections, the goals for this month, a 15th check-in for the July 15th, and then end the month review. Hopefully looking at things a little differently and being able to add my thoughts and feelings to this focus page will help me feel more motivated to get something done. Then of course I had to add the little corner design that I did on the last page and then the flower doodles at the bottom to kind of carry this theme and make this page seem a lot more cohesive. As mentioned previously, all the doodles are not outlined in a sac or micron, instead they're outlined in the same pen that's used to color them in. But as I was looking at this spread, I realized that the peace sign that I drew on the previous page was outlined in the sac or figure micron just because it was white. So I decided to go in and outline all the rest of my doodles in that black pen too. I ended up not really liking how it turned out, but it's already done and there's nothing we can do about it, so let's just move on. Because I was outlining them, I also decided to go to the previous page and finish outlining the love bug bust that I did on my quote page. That one I didn't actually mind though, because half of the drawing was already outlined in the micron with the white spots. So I felt like outlining the blue parts too also brought this picture to another level. Anyway, let's just forget that the outlining ever happened and move on to the next page which is going to be my trackers and gratitude. So I wanted to go into a little more depth about this font that I'm using called Clooper Black. I know you don't see it, but off to the side I do have a reference picture because this font is very new to me. I usually enjoy calligraphy fonts in my journal, but I really wanted to bring the 70s feel in with this one so I decided to try something new. Besides, it's always good to go out of your comfort zone just a little bit. So there are two main things that I realized were what were so special about this theme. One was because all of the serifs on all of the letters were rounded, and the second one was because the bottoms of each letters were very wide and added something to each letter. I really liked how this looked and slowly I got the hang of it, so hopefully by the end of the month I'll be a pro with this theme. Another thing I added to the letters was adding kind of the opposite of highlights, which are just little lines to the corners and since the letters were already right I just decided that was a good way to make them seem a little more 3D and obvious. Now before we add my favorite part of this spread let's go over my trackers. So last month I did two graph trackers one for mood and one for habits but this month since the doodles were really simple I wanted to do a mood tracker which I colored in a different doodle every day. In order to do this though, I had to make my habit tracker smaller, which is why it seems a little scrunched up at the top there. Although it's a little weird, I feel like it's still going to be a very functional aspect of my bullet journal and will help me track the things I need to do every day. Some of those habits are reading the Bible, drinking water, and exercising every day. I feel like if I can keep them in my journal, I'll be more motivated to actually do them. Now let's move on to the mood tracker. I already said that I'm outlining each of them. This is another reason why I wanted to outline the ones on the first page, because when these are all colored in, they're also going to be outlined. All my doodles are little flowers, hearts, just the same doodles that I've been using on the previous pages. Although each day is going to be a different size, what I mean is that one day I might color in a heart 
and the other day I might just colour in a little petal. But I feel like at the end of the month, it's all going to be coloured in and it won't matter what the sizes are for every day. The key in the corner has three colours in it. The yellow Tombow brush pen and then the orange and brown Crayola Super Tips. Now that I think about it, I want every day to be happy, which means that entire mood tracker is probably going to be colored in with yellow, but it's not a big deal, so let's just move on. The next page I'm doing is my gratitude page. I know a lot of people on YouTube like to do two lines a day spread or review spread for every day of the month, but I found that although it's a great idea to log your memories of what happened, it's also where I would usually rant about something if there's something bad happened that day. So instead of giving myself a special place to write down the negative things, I decided to do a gratitude spread. That way it forced me to think of one positive thing that happened that day. This is just a technique that I use to make myself have a more positive outlook on the day. And surprise, I had to add those little stripes in. Now let's move on to the last spread, which is going to be my weekly. And you might be wondering, Sophie, why are there only six days on this weekly spread? There are seven days in a week. And yes, I know that, and there is a specific reason. If you saw my creativity journal setup video, then you would know that I only actually made that video because I'm running out of space in this bullet journal. And so this means that I actually have to fit 12 days in this particular weekly spread, which is why I'm only doing six days on one half. I will eventually go in and do the other six days, but I decided not to video it because it's going to be the same thing as this side. The rest of the weeks in July will actually still be back to the seven day spread. And there will also probably be full spreads, that way it gives me more space for each day. If you are interested in how those will look and how the rest of this month will be filled out, check out my Patreon account linked in the description box below. I post multiple videos every month, more than I do on YouTube, and I will also be posting my rest of my weeklies. So now that this is all done, let's go to the flip through. I really, really enjoyed this retro theme this month, and I think it was a nice change from last month's airy feel. If you also enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. I want to give a special, special shout out to my newest patrons from my Patreon account. Erica, Izzy, and Deji, thank you so much for your support. If you're looking for more bullet journal content from me, check out my Patreon, where I post another video every week, along with sticker sheets and principles. That's it guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Toodles!